One of the most fun and satisfying things about flying an airplane is the almost absolute freedom of movement that you can experience. In an airplane, you can maneuver in all three dimensions and you can rotate about all three axes. An automobile or any other surface-bound vehicle can rotate about only one axis, and that's the vertical axis right here. Any other rotation, like sideways or end for end, is disturbing to the occupants and damaging to the car. Also, getting an automobile airborne and maneuvering it through space is uh, kind of considered undesirable. An airplane can maneuver in any direction in space and about any axis. The three axes of rotation are really just imaginary. You never will see one actually installed in an airplane, but using this concept gives the pilot a vocabulary to discuss how an airplane is controlled in flight. All three of these axes pass through the center of gravity. This is the point about which an airplane would balance as it is currently loaded. All rotations of an airplane take place about the center of gravity. One of the three axes is the lateral axis. Now, if you were to draw an imaginary line from beneath the right wing tip of the Cessna Skyhawk to beneath the left wing tip, and that line were to pass through the center of gravity, that line would be the lateral axis. The airplane is said to pitch about the lateral axis. The pilot uses the elevator control to pitch the airplane about the lateral axis. Although our parents may have objected when we stuck our hand out the window of a moving car, we were actually exploring basic aerodynamic principles. One of the things that we learned is when you rotate your hand to the proper angle, you create a force that moves your hand up. The same force moves the tail of an airplane when the elevator is deflected into the wind. If, for instance, the pilot wants to pitch the airplane so the nose would go up, he or she would pull back on the control wheel. This would raise the elevator into the wind. This creates an aerodynamic force similar to the one you would feel if you were to stick your hand out the window of a car and rotate it in the wind. The aerodynamic force moves the tail of the airplane down and the nose up. To pitch the nose back down again, the pilot would move the control wheel forward, lowering the elevator and raising the tail. Another axis of rotation is the vertical axis. Imagine a line from the ceiling of the airplane to the floor of the airplane that passes through the center of gravity. That line would be the vertical axis. Rotations about the vertical axis are referred to as yaw. The pilot uses the rudder to yaw an airplane about the vertical axis. To yaw the nose of the airplane to the left, the pilot presses the left rudder pedal, deflecting the rudder to the left, and aerodynamic pressure moves the tail of the airplane to the right. To yaw the nose of the airplane to the right, the pilot depresses the right rudder pedal, moving the rudder to the right and the tail to the left. The third axis is the longitudinal axis. If you were to draw an imaginary line from the tail of the airplane to the nose of the airplane and have that line pass through the center of gravity, it would be the longitudinal axis. An airplane is said to roll about the longitudinal axis, and that rolling motion is controlled by the ailerons. If, for instance, the pilot wants to roll the airplane to the left, he or she would rotate the control wheel in the airplane to the left. Because the ailerons are interconnected, when you lower one aileron, you automatically raise the other. This would put the right aileron down, increasing lift on the right wing, and the left aileron up, decreasing lift on the left wing, and the airplane would roll to the left. For a roll to the right, the pilot rotates the wheel to the right. Rolling the airplane about the longitudinal axis is also referred to as banking the wings. You bank an airplane to make it turn. In actual practice, banking or rolling an airplane for a turn is a bit more complicated than this. Let's assume you want to roll the airplane to the right for a turn to the right. You rotate the control wheel to the right. Now, when you do this, the left aileron will go down, increasing lift on the left wing, which will raise the left wing. 
Now, anytime there is an increase in lift, there is also an increase in drag, since drag is an unwanted byproduct that always comes with lift. We learned that from our car window. Remember, when you rotate your hand to make it go up, it also goes back. Just like your hand, the left wing not only wants to go up, but it also wants to go back, adverse or opposite to the direction you would like to turn the airplane. Also, when you rotate the control wheel to the right, the right aileron goes up, decreasing the lift on the right wing and decreasing the drag, and the right wing wants to go forward as well as down. In other words, the airplane wants to yaw, adverse to the direction you're attempting to turn it. This effect is called adverse yaw. In order to correct for adverse yaw, whenever you're rolling an airplane into or out of a bank, you use rudder. In fact, correcting for adverse yaw is the primary use of a rudder in flight in an airplane.